Before you can remove the integrated starter generator, the transmission and the ISG control unit must be removed. Then loosen the screw of the sensor plug on the control housing. And the plug inserted in the bracket of the control panel of the ISG. The sensors of the intake and exhaust camshaft are also removed. To do this, one screw must be loosened at a time. The hose to the air filter is also removed. The following work takes place under the car. Remove the screws of the centering flange and the centering flange itself. Then you can disconnect the hoses of the coolant. and the gear oil cooler, as well as the coolant inlet nozzle. Now remove the crankshaft sensor. In the next step, the air vent on the control unit housing is removed. Then the engine must be turned to ignition OT. Observe the direction of rotation of the engine. Also check the camshaft positions via the opening of the camshaft sensors. Then the mounting plate is positioned on the integrated starter generator and screwed on by hand. Once the plate is fixed, loosen the screws of the ISG to the crankshaft. Then the screws of the mounting plate can be tightened. Observe the specific torque. Now the screws of the ISG to the crankshaft can be removed. The assembly shaft is then inserted. Now the integrated starter generator can be removed from the vehicle. Be sure to lead the sensor plug through the opening of the timing case cover. Then mount the three supports of the fixture. The ISG can now be placed on a workbench for verification. To measure the air gap between the stator and the rotor, the handles must first be removed. The dimension of the gauge can be found in the corresponding VIS document. With a multimeter, you can also measure the phase resistance of the coils. To do this, check the phases U and V, V and W, as well as W and U, one after the other. Also check the phases X and Y, Y and Z, as well as Z and X. The set points can be found in the VIS documentation. The integrated starter generator is installed in the reverse order.